Hey folks, Sean here. And in this episode, I want to talk to you about where to grow from and how to do it after you've gotten some initial traction with your target market for your B2B SaaS. So if you've been through the process of converting prospects to paying customers and they're getting value out of using your product, you're probably going to want to know, okay, now what? How do I continue to grow from there? How do I continue to be successful and then scale this product? The key here, my opinion, is to go deeper into your target market not wider. I see this mistake from time to time and I'm going to explain to you what I mean. So let's say, let's use my podcasting product for an example. Now I'm building a tool to automate essentially the process of creating great titles and summaries and key points and quotes and all that kind of stuff from an individual podcast episode. Now there are plenty of people that can use that functionality and different types of personas are signing up for my product. And by that, I mean it's podcasters in general, individuals who may be recording podcasts like myself, and podcasting agencies, as in businesses that do podcast production for anybody who wants one, in particular for businesses. Now, the idea that I'm pursuing for my product is to build it around podcasting agencies, as opposed to individuals. So there are two options in terms of where I can go. I can go deeper into one of those two areas, or I can go wider and I can try to apply to both. Now, the objective here, in my opinion, is to go deeper as opposed to wider first. So that's a key sequential step, as in that should happen first. And this comes from lessons learned from great books like Crossing the Chasm, which talk about what it's going to take you to get from those early adopters to essentially like the early and then ultimately late majority, which is a much larger percentage of the target market. In the early days with your product, you're not going to have reached the kind of market penetration you're ultimately looking for to establish what some might consider to be product market fit for your B2B SaaS. And until you do, you should continue to go deeper until you have essentially made the kind of progress and you've made the kind of market penetration that you're looking for with who your target market is in the beginning. Until you reach that, don't go wider because you're going to spread yourself too thin and your product isn't really going to be a great fit for any of the potential target markets that you're pursuing. I just gave you two examples for the product I'm building. If I build around both of them, that ultimately is going to mean that I'm only really going to fit one or the other, but not either very well. And that's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm trying to achieve in the early days. So instead of doing either or, pick one. Pick one and then continue to go deeper. And what I mean by that is continue to build around that specific target market's needs. And as you continue to do that, then your fit in that market is only going to continue to increase. You are going to continue to become more defensible. You're going to continue to become more unique because more than likely as you're getting more specialized, other people are not. So you're going to want to continue to do that until you reach the kind of traction with that market that you're looking for. And then we'll talk about it in another episode. But after you've had that level of success, assuming that's worked out, then and only once you reach essentially like a saturation level, which is a certain percentage of traction within that target market, then should you consider going wider because you're looking to grow beyond that target market, but not before that. So the key here is really to focus on How do you continue the success of your B2B SaaS product? And my strong recommendation, especially in the early days, is to go deeper into your target market and not wider across others.